Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to continue exploring hardware acceleration on AWS for transformer models. In a previous video, I showed you how to use the newly launched Trainium chip to train a transformer model. In this video, we're going to start from the model that I trained on Trainium, and we're going to use Inferentia, another custom chip from AWS, to predict at scale and we'll run some benchmarks and i think they're pretty impressive so let's get to work the model that i trained on trainium is a text classification model i started from a BERT model and i fine-tuned it on the yelp uh, restaurant review data set and uh, this has five classes from one star to five stars once okay. training is launched i can see all the cores of the training chip uh, training on the model and this is super fast uh, only lasts for a minute or two and uh, then at the end of the code here i simply save the checkpoint as a pytorch checkpoint okay and this will be the starting point for the deployment video on inferentia there are a couple of resources you should check uh, if you're not familiar with inferentia Obviously, I guess you should read a little bit about the chip on the AWS website and about the INF1 instances, which are the EC2 instances that give you access to the chip. Here, I'm going to use um, an INF1 6XL instance, and it comes with uh, four inferential chips. And so that lets me demonstrate uh, inference at scale. Another uh, good resource, obviously, is the Neuron SDK documentation. Neuron is the SDK that gives you access to uh, Inferentia and, and Trainium as well. Um, and they have uh, some, some examples uh, which, are, which are pretty interesting. You can go and read all about that and the setup procedure. I did tweak that a little bit. Uh, I started from uh, the deep learning AMI. Uh, this is the one that I used, but you know, you could use a newer one if you watch this later. Um, and like I said, I adapted the um, uh, the instructions from the documentation. So um, set up the neuron repos, import uh, the, the package list, install the neuron tools, nothing really fancy, um, create a virtual environment, uh, add uh, the extensions for uh, uh, PyTorch Neuron, okay? So nothing really difficult. Uh, the one gotcha is this. You have to use an older version of Transformers because of this particular problem. So um, if, you, uh, um, if you see your um, inferential model predicting uh, NAND values, <laughs> Uh, if you get NAND logits, um, you know, chances are this is the problem you have, okay? And, well, that's the problem I had. And uh, so you need to downgrade um, transformers, okay? Hopefully that gets fixed. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. And, um, and then, obviously, I need to grab the model that I um, trained on Trainium. So I copied it to S3 and and from S3, okay? So now it's uh, it's on my instance, and this is the model I'm gonna start okay. with. So in my repo, you'll find two examples. Uh, the BERT MRPC example is the example in the um, uh, Neuron tutorial. Uh, I just, you know, cleaned it up a bit. There's a, there's the compile section and the, the, the test, the inference section. This one is interesting because it starts from a hub model. Okay, so it does pull a model from the hub directly. Okay, so if you're if you're interested in this, right, um, you can uh, you can go and, and read this example. It, it works perfectly. But my example is a little bit different because I am not starting from a model uh, that I push to the hub. I am starting from uh, a PyTorch checkpoint, right? That's the file that I saved on Trainium. So um, this one requires a little bit more uh, uh, preparation because I need to uh, rebuild the model from the checkpoint. Okay, so, um, so let's look um, at that. So first, you know, I need to know which model I started from. 
right? So this is the model that I train on Trainium. This is the my my starting model, okay? And this is important because again, I'm gonna need to rebuild uh, um, an empty model that I can load my checkpoint into, okay? So you need to know what model you started from uh, when you trained, okay? Uh, I can download the tokenizer for that. That didn't change, okay? And then I need to uh, rebuild a hugging face model from my checkpoint, okay? So it's not difficult. Um, first, I need to create a config file, okay? And I can use the uh, the auto config object from Transformers to do this, okay? Um, I need to tweak the config because this uh, model by default will only have uh, two labels and I want five, okay? So I need to, to define that. And then I can create my BERT for sequence classification model from that configuration. So now I have this uh, empty model, right, so to speak, and I need to load my uh, weights into it. So I start from the checkpoint, uh, load it with torch, and then I grab the state dictionary, which is just a, um, a dictionary of tensors and uh, the weights, and I load this into my BERT for sequence classification right. model. So okay. let's first define a couple of samples, a positive restaurant review, a negative restaurant review, tokenize them, uh, and then uh, I need to change the format of those uh, tokenized samples because we're going to use uh, Torch script, okay? And that's what the um, Neuron SDK uses. And uh, Torch script expects inputs that are tensors or uh, you know, different combinations of tensors. And that's not what I have here, right? Um, that's not what I have here. So I can just change, uh, you know, basically just grab the tensors from um, the tokenized inputs and build a, a, a tuple with those uh, with those tensors. Okay. Um, then uh, let's just predict those samples with the uh, with the model just to make sure you know the model is working and the checkpoint was properly loaded. Okay, so we can do this. We can check uh, that the the appropriate class has been predicted. Okay, so defining the classes, finding in the log it's the, the largest uh, positive value, which will give the highest probability for, for the class and then print out the results. Okay, so let's just run this, see how it goes. Okay, so just load the checkpoint and predict. And you shouldn't see any error uh, while you load the checkpoint, by the way. Um, all the tensors in the checkpoint should nicely fit into the model if you uh if you see some errors you need to pay attention because it means some weights haven't been properly loaded and you know that's bad uh, they're supposed to fit exactly right okay so we see the log hits and we see the predictions so fine i was able to load my model and i was able to predict so now let's move on to the next step which is uh, compiling the model for inferential and this is a really simple operation uh, all it uh, all it takes is this api from from the neuron sdk uh, we pass the model we pass um, an input um, we define this trick parameter to false um, because if we don't do that uh, compilation fails because there's a, a dictionary attached to the model and uh, and and neuron doesn't like that. So that's why when we load a model from the hub, you may have seen this, you know, return dict equal false. Okay, that's gonna solve the problem here. So if you load a model from the hub, make sure you use this parameter and this, uh, this will make uh, that strict mode unnecessary. But here, as I'm loading from a checkpoint, that dictionary is in there and uh, maybe there's a way to remove it you know i didn't go into uh, into that if you know how to remove it uh happy to uh, read about your comments but 
Otherwise, just uh, use that strict equal false parameter and you're good to go. And more importantly, we ask uh, the Neuron SDK to compile um, the model for the number of cores present on our instance. Okay, so uh, like I said, I've got a 6XL instance. It's got four inferential chips. Each chip has four neuron cores, so that's a total of 16. And I'm asking the model to, uh, the, I'm asking neuron to to compile the model accordingly. Okay, and that's going to give me the parallelism that I that I want. Okay, and uh, and then we just save the neuron model just like that. Okay, so not difficult. Um, you can read a little more about this API in the neuron SDK. They also have an analyze API that uh, tells you, you know, if the model is going to be. Uh, um, is going to be successfully compiled or not. Um, it's going to list, you know, operators that could be problematic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so there are a few more things you could you could try here. Uh, let's just go and compile the model. So it's going to tell you how many operators uh, it found in the model, how many uh, it can it can fuse. Quite a bit of information available there. Um, some operators will still run on uh, on CPU. Uh, and uh, and you can actually visualize that as well. So let's give it a minute to compile the model and, uh, and then we'll be back. After a couple of minutes, the model has been compiled. Uh, we can see it here. Yes. And now we can load it and predict with it. So let's move on to the second script. Um, so here we start from the same examples load the tokenizer, tokenize them, uh, prepare the input uh, accordingly. Same thing as in the, in the previous script, right? And um, we load the model, okay? Using a torch JIT. We predict our positive and negative samples. We convert the logits to NumPy arrays. We print them out. Find the top, uh, the top class for this, and print them out. Okay, so let's do this first, right? Uh, let's make sure this model is working. So Bert, Yelp, test. Just make sure we can load it and we get some good results, right? And the classes are what they should be. Okay, so uh, yeah, this looks like uh, this looks like a positive review, very positive, and this looks like a very negative review. Okay, so looks like the model is doing what it should be doing. So now, of course, uh, I just ran a, a couple of uh, inferences here. What I really want to do is run this thing at scale, right? So uh, I'll define um, a function to measure latency. And we're going to run uh, 100,000 predictions. Uh, I started from 16 threads because I figured, you know, we have 16 cores. So let's go and do this. Okay, build a, a progress indicator. And then we'll just fire up 16 threads. Uh, and each one of those threads is going to uh, call the inference latency function with the model and the input, okay? And we're storing all the, all the latency values returned by inference latency, which lets us com uh, compute quantiles and average throughput, okay? So let's fire this thing and see how we go. So let's run this benchmark. Uh, let me get out of the way. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't see much, right? And here we are. Okay, loading the model and then running 100,000 inferences. And we can see our throughput is about uh, 4,300 plus predictions per second, which looks to me like a good number. Uh, let's wait for, uh, for the latency. And so P95 is 3.7 milliseconds, 
which is not bad at all for a big model like BERT. Okay. Um, so I actually experimented with uh, other values. And uh, so let's try, you know, let's go overboard. Let's try 20. See if that makes a difference. Yeah, we may have just a little bit extra throughput, but yeah, I'm not so sure. 4318. Yeah, I think we might be able to squeeze a little more throughput, but probably at the at the expense of latency. Yeah, not sure if it's significant. Uh, latency is definitely uh, a little worse. Uh, and maybe let's try. I don't know, let's try 12, just to see how we go here. Throughput should be a little lower. Yeah, it is a bit lower. But maybe latency uh, goes down. Which, you know, which is fine. I mean, you, you depending on your use case, you may want to optimize for latency or, or you may want to optimize for throughput. Um, or maybe you want a balanced scenario. You need to run your own tests. Yeah, so we have uh, about 10% less throughput, but we have better latency. And again, you know, this benchmark is a, a bit crude because I'm only predicting a single, a single value here. Uh, it'd be a better idea to maybe you know load the test set and and predict, um, predict the test set or you know random samples from the test set. Uh, to get a to get a better view on latency for different uh, sequences. I mean, these are really really short sequences. But anyway, um, I think this is this is a really good number four thousand plus uh, predictions per uh, per second, and that's just one instance. Um, you know, single low single digit latency, uh, very interesting, uh, especially given the the cost of inferentia. Um, uh, instances or inf one instances, I should say. Um, this one, let's figure it out. Uh, this one is this one is one point eighteen dollars per hour. Okay, and that's on demand. So if you use spot, uh, you should be able to slash that down uh, quite a lot. And even if you go for the 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 big twenty four XL instance, it's uh, it's and this one has uh, um, 16 chips. So that's going to mean 64 cores. Okay. And it's $4.7 per hour. So if that thing scales linearly, then, and you know, I'm thinking it, it is, <laughs> you would be looking at, you know, maybe, yeah, 15K, 16K inferences per uh, second. Um, which is very good, and you know this is GPU territory, right? For for pricing, I mean the P3 XL instance is about uh, four dollars, uh, something like that. Um, so that's that's really really interesting. And um, yeah, if you want more detailed information, uh, I found this really nice uh, blog post. Again, I'll put the link in the, in the video description. Uh, they run some. Uh, they run some additional benchmarks. Uh, they compare that stuff to to GPU, um, and they also explain the different parallel uh, modes on Inferentia. Here I used uh, the pipeline mode, uh, which is so easy to use with just a, compila a compilation flag. There's a data parallel um, uh, technique as well. You may want to read about that. Um, and uh, this is a really good one, yeah. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. So the, I guess the one question we did not answer here is um, how to deploy that stuff. Uh, here I'm running um, predictions, you know, in, in a script. So obviously you could build that into your container and, um, and build a prediction API that uh, receives Input data and uh, and funnels it into your uh, uh, your prediction threads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure you folks know how to do this. 
Um, there's probably another way to do this, which is uh, using Amazon SageMaker. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I think Trainium and Inferentia are both supported by SageMaker. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll try and, and rebuild this uh, into an example. Okay, uh, well, that's really it for today. I hope you learned a few things. I hope this was fun. All the links in the description. And until next time, as usual, keep rocking.